Tanqua Artscape 2023. My name is Jean Pierre Villiers. Um, I'm one of the partners that um, owns and takes care of this piece of land in the Tanqua. I've been involved on the farm from about 2011. The first time I came here was during Africa Burn and uh, I sort of just stayed behind with one of the original partners called Hink and didn't really want to ever leave but I had to go back to reality unfortunately. So I'm a fruit and wine farmer in the Klein Karoo. That's basically what I do. I was went to an agricultural high school and farming's been in the blood forever and ever. So when you say this piece of land, we talk about the private Stonehenge Reserve, That's right? That's correct, yes. So what is this, this piece of land? Well, it's basically 3,200 hectares that's in the heart of the Tanqua Karoo. It's the driest place in South Africa. Our average rainfall is between 20 and 50 millimeters a year. So very, very sensitive area and it, it's very difficult for it to regenerate after the human impact for all the years in this area because of the low rainfall. What was the human impact? People started putting up fences. So animals couldn't move between the winter and summer rainfall area anymore. Then they introduced um, goats and sheep, which are so brittle and so sensitive. So they were not bringing in any nutrients anymore. Mm. They were just taking out. Because if you look at the, the two mountain ranges, the Rochefeld Mountains um, is the cutoff of the summer rainfall. Okay. And um, the Cedarberg Mountains is the cutoff of the winter rainfall. So animals used to move from the one side to the other side, big herds of animals bringing um, nutrients into the system and passing through yeah. for a short period. But now when you, um, the conventional farming of sheep and goat is a lot of animals in a very, very big area. I'm talking about a herd of 50 or 100. So it's not yeah. huge. And they stay in that camp on the farm for a long time. Time, and then they eliminate all the most palatable stuff that's growing there, plants that's growing yeah, there. Yeah. And then once that's eliminated, they go to the next one. And the, because they continuously grazing that area, the plants just disappear. So it depletes the, the little right. bit of natural resources even yeah. more. And when there's no more plants, when it rains, 20, 25 millimeters of rain that sometimes do happen um, with a thunderstorm, there's no way to keep the moisture to retain the water. So it, it becomes a flood every time. Yeah. But this land also has a longer history, right? Indigenous people used to live here? Yes. Yes, you can... Um, um, I think we've found what we think is uh, rock dwellings, which is little um, rock pieces that were packed. Um, and... Uh, <clears throat> I've, we've seen a lot of discarded stone tools. We even have uh, found Nubian cores, or what they would identify as yeah. Nubian cores, which is much older. Um, we found um, a piece, well, actually two pieces of petrified wood that is before Gondwana land, it seems like. So there's been a, there's a big history out there, and when you're out there walking in the plains, you sort of almost put yourself in the body of the the first peoples, the peoples that came here first. And and when you do that, you, you understand how much more in touch with nature they would have been to be able to thrive in areas like this. Yeah. So what is your connection to this land? Um, and how do you connect to it? It's difficult to say. Try. <laughs> um, it's just from the start, it's been there. And the longer you spend time, the more um, it, it's... I don't know, it, it feels like a place of healing for me. Um, and, and the sad part is that it's 
it's been so depleted. It's almost a, a contrast between um, what we have left behind as a legacy in the last three, four hundred years, but that this place still has that very, very strong feeling mm. of healing. Mm. When we shift the conversation towards the uh, residency program, I think the starting point was somehow Africa Burn. You got in conversations, you started this, and now this is at least what I see since I'm here. You're very, very much involved in this. How did all of this happen, and what does this residency program, Artscape, what does it mean to you? I think I met Kim and his group, which includes Lily, while they were building at the second year that Kim was here, which was also my second year. He had a big yellow tent down there, and they were here for about a month before the time. Maybe we just should say that this is the land where Africa Burn used to be. That's correct, yeah. yeah. Um, up till, um, to when we had the lockdowns. Um, that year was the last year they were going to have a burn here yeah. because they found other land which worked for them. Um, I met Kim and Lily in that period before the burn, which is an amazing period. It, there's not a lot of people on the ground and they are busy building, so they are actually busy creating. And um, the camp in itself, Tankwa Tented Camp, is like a little bit of an oasis for them as well. So now and again they will pop in for a cold beer or to get some Wi-Fi. And then the conversations will start. And from our side, we've always tried to be very helpful. And um, then maybe once a week they would pop in to, to come and... Um, eat something at the restaurant if they're tired of what they have down there. And we kept on having these conversations and, and even after the burn, Africa burn, they were still they were still around. And and one that I remember distinctly was sitting here at Tankwa Tented Camp talking to Lily and telling her that I've I've wondered if it's not possible to leave some of the creations behind or not necessarily creations from Africa Burn or start something on a much smaller scale similar to that. And then she told me, I must go Google land art. That was the first time I've ever heard the phrase. <laughs> I did that and, and most of what I could find was in uh, European and more wooded, higher rainfall areas. It was quite interesting, this whole start of a new journey for me to to um, get more into that and research that more and then more conversations with Kim and with Lily and then um, Kim came back um, they were doing the, a nomadic um, art project yeah. and did a, did something in a very special area of the farm which we call area 51 and that's also where we drop um, everyone that really wants to get to know the Tankwa, um, to walk back to the camp. It's about an a hour's walk, but most people take uh, three to six hours be because they get so immersed in the landscape and into the nothingness, and that's exactly what it's about. So after that, things was fast-tracked a bit, and we started talking about a residency and Basically, between Lily and Kim, there were definitely other people involved as well. But that was the driving force to get us to where we are today. And I'm, as a caretaker of the land, just trying to support from this side. Um, it's also been part of my... Yeah, it's also been part of my personal journey um, and awakening process. So it's been amazing. It's it's there's no words to describe mm -hmm. to describe being able to to share this and be involved and have discussions around the fire. Sorry. Perfectly fine. Take your time. Oh, it's no need to be sorry. The other thing that is 
is starting to happen is that it's almost like the energy of the artscape every year is building on the previous year. Um, it takes time. I think it's our fifth or sixth year. We I think missed one somewhere. But even with that, um, to see how it's evolving and mm -hmm. and also to see how artists relate um, to previous artworks and how that inspires them to write poetry about it mm -hmm. and um, to interact with it and yeah. to uh, go and make music in areas like that for, for different recordings. That's, that, that's magical. And, and it keeps on just growing. Yeah. So on one hand, you were saying you, you try to reduce human impact on the land or get rid of the leftovers of this impact. Correct. On the other hand, you add new things. So it's a very narrow path. And I've listened to a couple of conversations from your side, but also from the artist's side to find this right spot. What is it from your side? Uh, what defines or not defined is probably the wrong word, but what is the right spot for you uh, when you hear about, you know, uh, a project uh, that, that it does not fall into this trap of human impact on the land. So how do you balance this out? It is quite difficult. Um, we have made mistakes in the past, and I'm sure we, we are making mistakes every year. But we are really trying to listen to the land. And if somebody said to me 10 years ago, I would use that phrase, I would, would have laughed at them. But I think I'm in a different um, personal space in my life and, and I feel that I, I have grown. And um, I don't know, you, when, you, when you go out there, you have to spend time with the artist, you have to listen to, to their needs, then you have to drive around and, and, and see if there's a space that can work. And that space is definitely not the biggest tower on the highest hill. Because the Tankwa is pretty much damn perfect as it is. Mm. So um, the lighter we can tread, the better. I think we're getting there in a way, but it is difficult and it will stay difficult. And, and I think that's my key responsibility as a caretaker here yeah. is, is that when we put that art in, we must make sure that it blends in and blends away. And that's why we also encourage ephemeral pieces where we just have prints or recordings instead of doing the human thing of wanting to make our mark. So where does this wish come from uh, to have land art here? When you, on the other hand, when you say, you know, I don't want this human impact. Isn't this a contradiction? It definitely is, but I see it as a, as a building of a bridge in a way that a lot of our clientele that comes here are more conventional uh, European, white South African. They come here to have a few nice drinks in the bar and come with their touring motorbikes. But what's happened the last few years is we've got a lot of family groups coming with little children coming so the husband wants a few drinks in a pub but the wife is maybe a little bit more into art yeah. or the other way around and and i think this is a unique place to bridge those two worlds in a way and without forcing it just um, giving that opportunity for people to start opening their mind so my biggest wish is for everyone that comes here, if I can just get them to walk the Area 51 walk. I'll, I never force the walk on anyone, but I recommend it. And I'll drive there day after day, even just to drop one person. Because 
after you've done that, I've seen people's perspective change. I've seen big, big people cry down or, or, or break down and cry. People that you would think is, is strong or is is putting out that presence. So um, the art is just part of that, of, of sharing this area with people and, and also um, acknowledging the first peoples of the land here. So much comes through the art and changes your perspective in the end. Two more things. One is if you would have to describe the landscape here in five words, what would these five words be? My, I must first count, my, my original partner, it's his words, but they ring true every day. A feeling, not a place. A feeling, not a place. A fe That's a feeling, beautiful. feeling, not a place. Yeah. And then my last question, how would you describe, you were talk, talking earlier about this, your personal growth? What does it mean for you to grow as a person? You know, it's very often easily said and it's something like a little bit way. What does it mean for you? The experience that came to me during this residency was that there was some more biker type guys sitting around the fire at the LAPA and I was there as well um, chatting to them but I was in a way yearning to be at the fire of the group of artists and um, I walked to the fire of the artists and it just feels right so so for me my journey started as being a person at the fire for the bikers that's also my background. And now moving to the fire of the artists where there's a whole new world opening up and meeting people at that fire and having conversations on a completely different level than, than what I'm used to. And, and also trying to tone myself down to listen more instead of talking and talking over people. And, and, and then for me to come to, to the realization that some of the people around the fire that we, the artists are sitting, has come from their fire to this fire to teach us and, and, and to help us along. And, and their fire for me is where I must aim towards in time. So that's, for me, uh, maybe a description of the personal journey and also to sit in this fire in the middle almost and, and also know that I've got a, um, a responsibility to go to the first fire and, and show people the way to the second fire without forcing them mm -hmm. and then um, being thankful that people from the third fire is at this middle fire to help me with my journey. Mm. So, but, and this is where the landscape again comes in and helps, no? Yes. In yeah. opening Definitely. these new doors. It opens doors. I think it opens pathways <clears throat> in your brain even as well. So it's definitely, it's, a, it's becoming more aware in the journey. And there might be many more fires moving forward for us as, as humanity. I don't know... Which way will go? But the, the the fire thing sort of works for me as a um, as yeah. a way of, of understanding it in my mind. Yeah. Thank you.